Today we're going to be taking you through the best settings for the LG 45GX950A OLED monitor. We'll set the screen up in both SDR and HDR usage, as well as some general settings for things like OLED care. You can use these settings from a PC or any external device like a games console or media player. We have the screen in its default factory configuration, and first of all we're just going to make a couple of changes to the OLED care settings or check that they're active. So we're going to come down to the general menu, we're going to check that the OLED features are enabled. We'd recommend having as many of these enabled as possible to help with the mitigation of image retention. Turn any off that you feel are problematic for your usage. OLED screen move should be turned on, screen saver should be turned on, and you can run the pixel cleaning manually if you need to. Those are all on by default. You can enable the hexagon lighting on the back of the screen as well if you want here. If you come down to smart energy saving, just check that that is turned off, otherwise that will severely limit your brightness capability. And then the input compatibility version, this should be set as DisplayPort 2.1 by default. If you have any problems from an RTX 50 series graphics card for HDR or anything else, you might want to switch this down to the DisplayPort 1.4 mode. Both of them will operate at the full resolution and refresh rate anyway, so there's no real benefit in using the DP 2.1 mode anyway. So if you have problems, just change that over there. So we'll set the screen up first of all in SDR configuration. And to do this, you can select from a couple of the different game mode presets over here. The default is Gamer 1, which will operate with the screen's full native wide color gamut. The other gamer related presets like Gamer 2, FPS, they're just a series of different presets for colors and sharpness and things like that. You can use those if you want for your specific usage, but they are just different configurations for what we're going to set up here anyway in the Gamer 1 mode. So you're probably better just sticking with Gamer 1 and using our tweet settings. If you scroll down this list, you'll find a couple of options for the sRGB and DCI-P3 emulation modes. We'll come back to sRGB in a moment because you may want to use that for general SDR content and better accuracy in the sRGB color space. For now, we're just going to leave that on Gamer 1. In the game menu, you might just want to check that Adaptive Sync is enabled here. You can use the black stabilizer setting to tweak the near black shadow detail. So if you find any of your darker games or darker content hard to see, you can change the setting up or down accordingly. We found that bumping this up a couple of notches did help in particularly dark scenes. So have a play around with that to see what it's like for your usage and your particular content. So with the screen set on the Gamer 1 mode and operating in its full wide gamut, we're going to come to the Picture Adjust menu, which is where we're going to make the majority of the changes. Brightness is at 90 by default. You want to lower this, and there are different options depending on how bright you want the screen. We're going to lower this down to a setting of 64, which will give you a luminance of around 120 nits. You could set this at 76 for 150 nits, or 88 for 200 nits. For the purposes of this video, we'll set this at 120 nits, but set this to whatever you feel is comfortable for your ambient lighting conditions and your user preferences. It won't impact any other aspects of the calibration or accuracy. For office applications and general usage, we'd probably leave peak brightness turned off. You can enable that and move it up to the low or high settings if you're primarily using the screen for SDR, gaming and multimedia. That will give you the capability of reaching a slightly brighter screen but you will see some ABL dimming in certain scenes that can be distracting in office applications. So we'd leave that turned off for office, but maybe consider turning it on if you want a brighter performance for gaming and multimedia. Contrast can stay at its default setting of 70, sharpness at its default 50. The gamma mode, we're going to change from gamma mode two to gamma mode four, as we found that delivered a gamma slightly closer to our 2.2 target, and it really helped with the RGB balance and the color temperature as well. So move gamma to mode four for SDR. Color temp can stay on its custom setting and the RGB channels can actually stay at their default 50, 50, 50. That gives you a nice white point very close to 6,500 Kelvin. So there's no need to change that there. So the main settings we've changed are gamma to mode four and brightness we've adjusted accordingly. So that's the screen set up in its native wide gamut mode for SDR. The alternative is using the sRGB emulation mode, which is available in the game mode menu. You can find that here. And with sRGB mode enabled, you'll find that the color gamma is clamped back to sRGB for all applications now. So that might be preferable if you're working specifically with SDR and sRGB content. So in the picture adjust menu, we can change the brightness setting and the RGB levels as well. So 
We'll just change the brightness again. So we can set that at 64 for 120 nits, 76 for 150 nits, or 88 for 200 nits. Or set that accordingly to whatever your user preference is. Contrast can stay at its default 70. And in the sRGB mode, we're going to actually tweak the color channels to give us a better balance and a better white point. So we're going to move red up to 55, green down to 49, and blue up to 52. So we found that greatly improved the sRGB mode and corrected the color temperature and the white point nicely. So those are the settings that you should change within sRGB mode for that better balance. So it's just the RGB levels, 55, 49, 52, and the brightness that you want to adjust there. So with the screen configured in SDR mode, as we've just done, you may also want to try out our calibrated ICC profile, which is linked in the description below. That will be used in the default Gamer 1 native wide gamut mode, but it will clamp the color space back to sRGB for use in color aware applications. And it will also make some minor corrections to things like the white point and the gamma curve. You'll find that linked in the description below in our database. We've now enabled Windows HDR, which has moved the screen into its HDR mode as shown here. As a reminder, we'd only recommend enabling Windows HDR when you're actually going to view HDR content. There's reasons for that that are explained in our video that's linked below in the description. In HDR mode, you'll see you still have access to several of the preset gamer modes. We're actually gonna stick with gamer one. All of these modes are just different configurations of the settings that you can play within the menu anyway. So there's no real benefit in using any of the other modes unless you specifically want that default configuration. We're gonna use gamer one. Again, you can adjust the black stabilizer if you find dark scenes too bright or too dark in any way. Moving that up a notch or two might help with the near black shadow detail. So have a play around with that for your usage and your content. In the picture adjust menu, we would recommend leaving brightness on its maximum 100 to give you the full brightness capability of the panel. But the peak brightness setting, we expect most people will prefer to switch this up to the high setting. That will give you access to the full 1300 nits peak brightness and the better HDR brightness performance. Sharpness can stay at its default 50. Color temp, we would leave at its default warm setting. That seemed to be the closest we could get to a D65 white point. It's slightly cooler than it should be. So the other option is to use the manual mode and select W1 for warm one. That's then slightly warmer than it should be. So if you find one mode slightly too cool or one mode slightly too warm, you can switch between those. So warm is slightly too cool ironically, and manual W1 is slightly too warm. They're very close to the D65 white point though, so you can use either there. We're just gonna stick with warm for now. And that's all the settings that you need to make in HDR mode as well. If you've got any questions, please let us know in the comments section below. If you found this video useful, please just give us a quick like and subscribe below. That would be really appreciated. Thank you for watching. We'll catch you next time.